Hello, is this, is this thing on as they say in all the best uh, presentations? Hello, uh, my name is Matt Hatton. I'm one of the founding partners at, at Transform Insights and I'm just trying to find the spot on the stage where the beamer isn't going directly into my eyes. Uh, I'm going to be talking to you a little bit about the public LoRaWAN space, but before I do that, I should probably introduce uh, who I am. Uh, you may be thinking, who, who's this guy? Well, I do a lot of things like this and a lot of things like that where I get up in events and I talk about what's happening in technology areas around specifically uh, the Internet of Things. We're a research consulting firm focused specifically on, well, probably 80% of what we do is, is, is IoT and a, a few other areas of, of technology. And I get to do this kind of thing because I do that kind of thing. Where we look at okay, technical and commercial best practice in, in how IoT is being deployed, what new technologies are coming up, what the various vendors are doing, how big the market's going to be. You saw some uh, uh, forecasts in the, in the previous presentation. We do that kind of thing uh, as well. One note to say, we've been watching this low power wide area market for a very long time. And uh, in fact, it was the other founder at Transform Insights who came up with that name about, a, about 10 years ago. So if you talk about LPWA, you've got Jim Morris, who's my partner in crime, to thank for that one. So we've got a bit of heritage in looking at this space. So one of the macro trends that we look at is around something that we term the thin IoT stack, how new technologies are arriving that are helping to uh, allow a lot of the IoT applications and, and, and solutions that we, that we see in the market. Uh, and what we've seen over the last 10 years or so is across the stack, new capabilities arising that will simplify and, and, uh, and make cheaper, critically, the deployment of IoT uh, solutions. And that's, and that's everything across it from device hardware, things like system on chip and chip on board. It's device software, operating systems that are more appropriate for, for, for IoT. It's networks critically, which I'm going to be talking about uh, predominantly today. And it's also things like middleware platforms and uh, edge computing, AI. Throughout this stack, we've got a whole stack of technologies that are uh, much more appropriate for, for supporting, supporting IoT. And hence the explosion or eh, steady growth in, in, uh, in, in IoT connections over the, the coming years and decades. On the question of connectivity technologies, which is what I want to talk about uh, today, you know, there's a, there's a number of different ways in which you can think about the, the various different technologies that, that are available. We've got a couple of dimensions that we, we look at here. One is around how many bits and bytes of data do you want to, do you want to send. Another one is about range. A, a third one might be around whether something's being used for a, in a public network or in a, in a private network, whether it's self-deployed or, or, or via a, a public network. And when these LPWA technologies cropped up, there, was a there were a variety of different, different approaches. So you had uh, Sigfox cropped up, and the mobile operators were looking at, okay, well, how do we compete with this? Let's try and develop something within the context of 3GPP. And then there was this other interesting technology that had come up called LoRa. LoRa WAN now, as we, we, we tend, to, tend to describe it. And this looked interesting, and it looked interesting for us, but predominantly thought of as a, as a private network technology, something that you deployed your own network and, and, and away you go. But a lot of the operators thought, you know what, this is, this is a great technology for us as well. Maybe we can use this particularly to compete with Sigfox because we're not expecting this, uh, the MBIoT and LTEM technologies to be available for quite a few years, so maybe we, we deploy the, the LoRaWAN networks. And so they did. And we saw a whole bunch, um, some examples of public network deployment. So uh, bottom left, you've got Machine Q. You've got some of the big telco incumbents from, from Europe. You had KPN and Swisscom and, and Orange in France deploying, uh, deploying LoRaWAN as a, as, a, as, as a way of getting into that, that, uh, that low power uh, market. But we thought this was a bit of a stopgap. That was the assumption, OK? These are mobile network operators. They exist within the context of the 3GPP. The, the technologies are 2G, 3G, 4G, 5G that you heard about earlier. So the assumption would be, 
Well, surely the roadmap is to carry on with, with that when, when, the, when the 5G technologies or MBIOT and LTM, which have become known as 5G technologies, they've been dragged kicking and screaming into the 5G standard. When those are available, surely the, the roadmap is to, to evolve to those, but not necessarily. You know, you talk to KPN and Orange and, and, and various other operators who have deployed this in conjunction with, a, with a, an existing network, and they say, we're happy with how this is, this is going. Actually, the, the roadmap isn't necessarily to include MBIOT. LTEM, they're all, they're all doing. MBIOT is a slightly different, uh, different setup. And we've got some other players coming in, setting up uh, public networks, uh, the likes of Everynet, who are a neutral host operator, uh, rolling out networks in, in, uh, in Italy, Brazil, a bunch of other, other territories. Uh, we've also got these crowdsourced uh, networks that we're, we're showing down the bottom here, things like Amazon Sidewalk, um, which well, maybe that's got some opportunity to provide what is a sort of a pseudo-public network, but the, the reality is, are you going to rely on that for a enterprise deployment? For you, You'll all have seen some of the great use cases that have been presented here. Would you rely on a crowdsourced network for doing that? You, you probably wouldn't. And, and that brings me on to my, my next point. If you're thinking about deploying an IoT solution, what you're thinking about is, okay, how do I pick my vendor? Which technology do I choose and which vendor's networks am I, am I going to be uh, going on to? And some of it's about the technical capabilities. You heard all about that in the, in the previous presentation. But a lot of it's actually about who's the organization? Who's, who's providing this? Do I feel comfortable that they're going to be able to uh, support my needs for the, for the long term? Am I going to have a, a long-term partner for my uh, connectivity requirements? There's a, there's a question of what, what we term counterparty risk. Okay? You've all heard about the, the challenges that Sigfox has had over the course of the last few years. Well, if you were somebody thinking about deploying a, a, an IoT solution, then you might think twice about who, my, who your partner is based on some of the experiences that, that companies like that might have, have had. And so we look at, then, dig into who are the providers, okay? Are these companies you can trust? If you're, if you're here, this LoRaWAN network is deployed by KPN. Is that a trustworthy organization? I would damn well hope so, right? The, the degree of trust in telcos is generally incredibly high. But in the markets in which we've got public LoRaWAN networks, it's not always those uh, incumbent telcos that are, that are deploying the networks. So what we did, we went through uh, actually a bunch of information from the, uh, from the LoRa Alliance on who had deployed public networks, public LoRaWAN networks. And it's a really mixed picture. Okay, you've got, uh, in some cases, mobile network operators, the blue... Uh, blue blobs. Uh, in some cases, you've got four or five different networks deployed in, in a market. In some markets, there are no public LoRaWAN networks. In, in others, there are uh, a, a mixture of different specialist service providers and, and solution vendors and, and, and so on. So it's a real mixed bag in terms of how uh, comfortable somebody might be, an enterprise deploying uh, IoT using public LoRaWAN, how comfortable they might be with, with those vendors in the space. So we're in a situation where we've got lots of good deployments of public LoRaWAN in various different markets, but it's very much a mixed picture. So good and increasingly good as a result, particularly of some of the uh, the work that, say, every net has done in, in, in terms of, of putting out um, uh, neutral host networks, but it's still quite patchy, which means that in a lot of cases, you may only think about LoRaWAN as being the network technology for deployments within a country. Okay? If, if what you're trying to do is some of the examples of uh, if you're monitoring trees, well, those trees aren't going to move anywhere. So you can deploy your solution using LoRaWAN, and you're, you're happy that that, the, um, uh, that that tree is probably going to stay within the country in which it was, was initially uh, 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 growing, shall we, shall we say. So that kind of, um, that kind of thing is, 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 is pointing us towards, okay, 
It's a good picture, it's an improving picture, but it's certainly still not, not a perfect picture. And then we think, have to think also about a whole bunch of these other uh, areas of, okay, well, wh what are the pros and cons of, of, of LoRaWAN versus some of the other, other technologies? And it, it's things like, um, you've, you have to look at the roadmap. I mentioned about that, that earlier. Um, so some network operators not looking at, at, at deploying MBIO to, to at all. You've got these neutral, neutral host operators. You have got, as was mentioned by the previous speaker, a really vibrant ecosystem. You only have to go out there to see what a, what a vibrant ecosystem in, it, there is, particularly with regard to devices and, 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 and solutions. And, and typically, lower cost. But on the con side, reduced capabilities, not quite as, as capable as some of the three GPP technologies, that lack of universality, which I, which I alluded to, to earlier. You can't uh, come up with a, a, a global solution to be deployed in every country to rely on public LoRaWAN networks. It's just not, not feasible. And other examples, license exempt spectrum, so you don't have to pay for that. Um, uh, sorry, license exempt spectrum is both a pro and a con, I guess, so you don't have to pay for that, but also at the same time, you've got issues of, of, um, uh, of everybody trying to pile onto the same uh, thin bit of spectrum. And you've got this issue of counterparty risk. So, so the, the, the bottom line is good, but not overwhelmingly good but certainly moving in a, in, a, in a very positive direction. And on that note, it wouldn't be an analyst presentation if I didn't put up a slide that showed how many billions of devices we were expecting there to be in the, in, in the world. This is not total IoT, this is wide area connected devices that we're, we're talking about here. And we break this down by the various different generations and the various different uh, implementations. So we've got a, a line in there for the LPWA non-MMTC, Okay, so that's all those LP1 technologies using uh, predominantly unlicensed spectrum. So you can kind of think of that as the LoRaWAN line, although it does include Sigfox and a, and a, and a few other, other technologies. About half of that is, is over private networks. About half of that is over, over public networks. So a substantial chunk of the, of the market. But you've also got the, the 5G MMTC ones, the LTEM and the MBIOT, and we, we expect that to be probably a larger part of the, of the market, a lot of that being in China, because there is a significant push in China specifically on, on MBIOT, and that tends to influence the, the global perspective of how these, these technologies are going. And you have this universality of deployment, or eventually you, you will you be able to get MBIOT coverage in just about every, every market. One uh, final thing I wanted to, to, to talk about, okay, so that's, that's having thought about all of these issues relating to, to how uh, organizations might think about using, using public law, law or WAN. But there's an, another macro level topic, similar to that thin IoT concept I talk about, talked about earlier. Uh, there's this concept of, of cross-optimization of the different elements. So rather than just thinking about the, the technology, okay, Am I picking LoRaWAN, or am I picking MBIOT, or am I picking you know, everything relating to, to devices and uh, operating systems and protocols and, 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 and so on? There's an increasing requirement for everything to be cross-optimized. Okay? There's a lot of discussion recently, for instance, about uh, the, the fact that uh, MQTT and MBIOT and these other constrained protocols don't work particularly well together. Uh, there's a lot of consideration about uh, if you're trying to get long battery life, then you need to be using certain uh, features and functionality, certain operating systems or certain uh, technologies. Then increasingly in IoT, and particularly in it, when we think about anything that uses LoRa, this is, a, this is an in, incredibly constrained environment. And you need to be thinking about um, all of the various different elements of the, of the solution and, and how they work with that technology. So it's not necessarily a question of what's the best technology. It's the quest, it's a question of the best technology in conjunction with all the other technology choices that, that you might be making in terms of uh, protocols and hardware and, and, and particularly 
how the application itself works. How many messages are you sending? How reliable do you need it to be? Uh, how often do you need it to send and what latency is, is required? Okay, so again, it's, it's all very much a question of, I guess the term is horses for courses. You pick your, your technology at, according to what those other elements might be and you have to optimize all of those various different elements with each other. So as you develop IoT, applications or as you're a supplier to organizations developing IoT applications, it, it very much has to be about thinking about the, the, the whole stack. I haven't put it as a stack, I've put it horizontally, but there, there you go, it's, it's effectively a stack and how all those various different constituent elements work together. That's about my time, thank you very much. I, I can take questions if there are any, or I, I might need to hurry off the stage. Seems like not. Okay, thank you very much.